Uh, so the fertility landscape is completely changing. People used to have babies in their 20s, and now they have babies in their 30s and 40s. And as a result, a third of the people who want to have babies, they don't have them. Last year in the United States, um, when you ask women how many children they wanted to have, they said they wanted to have between two and three before they were 30. And the women who turned 45 last year, 19% uh, had no babies, 22% had only one. And in Europe, the landscape is even worse. So based on this challenge, around two years ago, I, I started Prelude, raised 200 million, and built what is now the largest chain of fertility clinics in the US. And, we're, and Europe is next for us. And so what happens is people delay motherhood, and they delay parenting. And then when they want to have children, it's many times too late, and they use IVF. But what happens is sex fails around a third of the time over a lifetime, and IVF also fails a third of the time over many tries, because people just show up when it's too late, right? And so, so what happened, the trends that we picked up is that as people were having children later in life, we worked on the technology, we worked on the science, we worked on the payments, and we found a way for everyone to start a family when they're ready, right? So these are the states in the United States where we're in. Um, as I said, we became the largest chain of fertility clinics in the US, and we work with conceivers, meaning women who want to, or, or parents who want to have babies, with savers, younger women who save their eggs for later. We work with donors who give eggs to women who are older and can't have uh, babies. We work with gay couples, uh, with surrogacy. With it. We just help everyone uh, start a family when they're ready. Um, we've had over 4,000 babies born out of frozen eggs. So this is not like an experimental technology. This is being very well applied. It is interesting that in Germany, a lot of, or some of the things we do are not legal. And it would be interesting to understand why they're not legal. Why is it that in Germany, for example, egg donation is not legal and sperm donation is legal. So if a guy has issues with his sperm, he gets a sperm donor, becomes a dad. But if a mom has issues with her eggs, she has to fly to Spain, right? So these are things for you to think about of why is it that Germany is so backwards when it gets to helping women have babies, especially in a country that has a huge fertility crisis. So what we came up with is called the prelude method, which is basically to freeze eggs and sperm when you are fertile, to make embryos when you're ready, to do genetic testing on the embryos to see which ones are viable, because over half of embryos after the age of 35 are not viable, to screen the parents for illnesses that your children may have that may kill your children at a young age, and to transfer single embryos not to have unwanted multiple pregnancies, because in the history of IVF, people transfer a lot of embryos, and they end up with a lot of uh, multiple pregnancies, which are really dangerous. Um, the one thing I want to say that Prelude does not do is Prelude does not make designer babies. Like, we don't make, if what you're looking for is like a better looking baby or a taller baby or anything like that, we don't do that. But if you're looking to have a healthy baby when you're ready, that's what we do. Uh, should we do the Q&A? Okay. So, Martin, you're probably one of the most accomplished entrepreneurs we have in Europe. Thank How you. many companies have you founded? Eight. Eight. Why another one at this point? You already <laughs> have seven children, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, I had four before. I mean, my wife is there in the audience, and we had our children with IVF. And the last baby, which is a year and a half, was born exactly out of frozen eggs, frozen sperm, genetically tested embryos, whatever. So I could say 
companies gave me Wi-Fi everywhere, but I, I think a company that gives you a baby, well, that's a good reason. It's a holy grail, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love children. I don't know. Not everybody feels like me. But I think having a child is for most people or the most important thing in their lives. And, and I think helping people make babies is a great thing. I also think many other things that you see in this conference are great things. Uh, and it's not the only thing I personally do, but I, but I do love this sector. You said something interesting in the beginning. You said you may don't want to have children between, did you say 35, 45? Or? No, I said that, look, when people can make babies, they don't want to. And when they want to, they can't. <laughs> That's what's happening. We are matching people's psychology with people's biology. So timing is, is everything. Now, we used to, we, the baby boomers, why are they called the baby boomers? Because they were 22 and they were having babies. Who's having babies at 22 now? So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, the, the product itself. Is there anything you would say is revolutionary different you do versus the incumbent operators? Clearly, <laughs> you're a master of marketing and digital, and I'm, I'm sure you, you, you're spinning a good story. How do you sell it in the market, what, what you do different? Well, we in the United States, we teamed up the best clinics, so we have great medicine. But we also came up with a subscription model that uh, patients pay per month. So instead of having to pay $12,000 up front, they pay, uh, let's say, $199 per month. And, it's a, and it covers everything, the, the, the freezing, the thawing, the embryo making, the genetic testing. It's almost like a baby, I mean, my legal department says I shouldn't use the word insurance, so we're not going to use it, just but it's like a baby program paid per month, okay? So I mean, it's not problem. insurance because actually you may fail to get a baby even this way, I should say so, and it's true, and it happens that some people What's do What's the failing ratio for well, that? Well, let's say if a third fail who never preserved their fertility, I would say 10% failed who preserve their fertility, and 5% fail who did three cycles of preserving their fertility, because it's just a question of how many eggs you have. And for men, this is very important, not because men cannot, men are kind of binary. Either you're flawed at 20, and you're flawed at 40, or you work well, you're, you're fertile at 20, or you're fertile at 40, but men make twice the children with severe mental illness at 45 than at 25. So men are contributors of autism, schizophrenia, manic depression, obsessive compulsive disorders, all sorts of things that if you had a choice, you would say, I'd rather not have one of those, meaning those illnesses. So yesterday we had our female executive lunch, how we kicked off Noah, and we had a great debate on career versus babies, family planning, which is especially for, for women. Uh, a, a challenge. Have you thought about the B 2 B to C model that you go to big corporates like a Google and a Facebook who want to preserve their female talents and would they pay like they pay for gym massages Look, uh, and all? At the our clinic in San Francisco already, I would say a third of our cycles are not IVF but fertility preservation, of which most of them are employees of. Apple, Google, Facebook, that their companies are paying for these. And I believe, you know, I've seen reaction of women in Europe saying, oh, they want me to enslave me at the workplace. And the answer I give is, look, if they offer you egg freezing and they don't offer you childcare, maybe they want to enslave you in the workplace. If they offer you child benefits and fertility benefits, no, they want you to have more choices for when you're ready. So how big is the market? Like, how not prelude, but like the overall, let's call it what the US market. How, how many people are actually well, doing this? You'll be surprised that Europe is such a leader in this market. Not exactly the market of fertility preservation, which America is the leader, but it is incredible how many babies are born out of IVF in Europe. In, in Europe, there were five is million. Is it like 5% in Europe it, or 2%? Yeah, I'll tell you, out of 5 million babies born in Europe last year, there were 600,000 IVF cycles. There were around 4% of babies born with IVF. And in America, there were 4 million babies born. There were 180,000 IVF cycles and 70,000 babies born. That is 1.5%. So Europe is way ahead of the United States in, in IVF. 
but not in fertility preservation. Now, last question, which wasn't in the list, but um, I'm curious. What is the Catholic Church saying about IVF? Well, I think the Catholic Church, the, the, there's a question of the Catholic Church and the Catholics, right? The Catholics uh, still use condoms, thank God, and use uh, 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 contraceptives. But the Catholic Church is confronted with two situations now. One is what happens now. People have sex, they are four months pregnant, they go for an amnio, and there's something wrong and they abort. So I talk, when I speak to people who believe that there's something wrong, and I don't, I believe women have the right to choose, but let's say everybody should believe whatever they believe. What I say is, what do you prefer? A world in which you select the embryos, where you freeze the embryos, you, wouldn't, you would have aborted. You were never pregnant with the embryos you would have aborted. So when people who are religious say, well, egg freezing, the, the Catholic Church has nothing to say against egg freezing or egg freezing. It's the problem is embryos. But we have we've spoken to some clinics that call themselves Christian clinics. So what do these Christian clinics do? Well, they never destroy embryos. And destroying embryos is the one thing that people of certain religions are against. And personally, I believe that there's a way to do all this without ever destroying embryos. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. Thank you so much. Amazing to see. Thank you for having me. What places you go and take us. <laughs>